Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Ravnica Allegiance draft video here on the channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, welcome, welcome, welcome. Before I begin, I do want to remind you to hit that thumbs up button. It really does help me out a ton, and if this video gets to 50 thumbs up, uh, I will be doing a uh, draft analysis where I go through the beginning of my draft in detail in the comments section of this video and discuss potential alternate ways the draft could have gone, picks that I think I should have made in retrospect, and things of that nature. So if you want to see that, or if you want to support the channel, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Also, if you want to get updates for whenever I post new content, including new draft videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out a ton. Uh, I really hope to reach 1,000 subscribers soon. And I really do appreciate everybody that supports the growth of the channel. And then finally, a little bit of a challenge in the comments section. People uh, from time to time ask me why I don't make Magic Arena content. And I do want to throw a little bit of a challenge to everybody who wants to see Magic Arena content. If you want to see MTG Arena content, let me know in the comments section down below. If you want to keep seeing Magic Online content, let me know in the comments section down below. And then whichever... Uh, whichever platform gets more votes in the comment section of this video, I'll make a draft video on that platform next. So if Magic Arena gets more votes, I'll make another, I'll make one on that. And if uh, Magic Online gets more votes, I'll make, uh, continue to make my videos on this uh, for my next video. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Without further ado, let's get into the draft. Hello and welcome to the drafting portion. Uh, Going to dive right into the pack. Angel of Grace is a Stone Cold Bomb. Five mana, five four with flying with flash is already incredible. Uh, and then it can also protect your life total in some cases. And its exile ability is really nice. So I think Angel of Grace is just a really, really, really potent card. Great in Orzhov decks or in uh, Azorius decks. Not really a splashful card, but still a very potent one. Uh, Repudiate Replicate is a card that I was not super impressed with. Uh, I have tried it out. Uh, copying your cards is nice, uh, but there are some bounce effects, and the triggered ability thing is like sometimes relevant, but not super relevant. I do like Collision Colossus a good deal. Uh, I think the fact that you can main deck Flyers Hate in your Grohl deck while also having a good combat trick is really nice. Trollbred Guardian is definitely my second uh, pick out of this pack, though. I think Trollbred Guardian is incredible. But this pack is overall just very good. Blade Juggler is a key card in Rakdos. Aramunculus is a nice card as well. So really, that's a really strong pack, but I would have definitely taken the uh, Trollbred Guardian uh, second out of that pack, I think. Okay, so we have this strong white card, but what are we going to do with it? That is where uh, the five-pick method comes into play, and that's the method that I use in almost all Ravnica sets. And how that pick method works is I just take the best card out of the pack regardless of what colors it is. So normally, you would take a white card and like bias towards white. But because in Ravnica, the payoffs for finding the open guild are so much higher, you get strong gold cards, like uh, final payment, and get the point like later on in drafts. Uh, finding the open colors is so much more important in a Ravnica set uh, that you're willing to abandon even a strong mythic rare like Angel of Grace in order to find the open colors. So we're not going to let ourselves be biased by this in any way. Uh, Orzov Racketeers is an interesting card. Uh, 5 mana 3-2 is not that big, but Afterlife 2 is pretty nice. Final Payment, also a very strong common. Get the Point is also quite strong. Um, I'm really not 100% sure what the best card in this pack is. Uh, I think it could be Get the Point, maybe Final Payment. I think I'm going to go with Blade Juggler. I think it's a nice balance. I think Orzhov Reketeers is a bit expensive for 5 mana. 5 mana 3 twos is not the ideal stat line that I would like to pursue in this format. Blade Juggler, uh, just a nice balance. I think it's Early on in the draft, I don't need to really prioritize final payment as much uh, because the it's a card you only really want one copy of, maybe two, because the five life really does add up. Um, and then get the point is a card that I think is not perfect in Rakdos because costing five mana is a real downside. The best Rakdos decks that I've seen maybe want one copy of that card as well. And when it's a card that you only really want one copy of, uh, I'm much more likely to just take uh, other cheap cards. And Blade Juggler is really quite strong, uh, I think. Uh, when you compare it to the 5 mana 3-2 that like, can make them discard, by that point in the game, they're always going to have things to discard. But let's just look at this pack for a second. Skatewing Spy is really quite nice. Uh, I think this card is pretty strong, but not insane. I think Summary Judgment's a little bit better. The fact is that this is a 4 mana 2-3, and late in the game you can adapt it, but it's not even a huge adapt. So I think Summary Judgment's going to be a little bit better uh, overall, though we are by no means committed to anything yet. Uh... But the thing about the 5 mana 3-2 that I was talking about before that, that has Afterlife 2, I think that one's like a very risky card because a lot of the removal exiles. So there's like the 2 mana red spell that exiles. Uh, there's the black removal spell, Grotesque Demise, that exiles. Uh, the white blue removal spell is an enchantment removal spell so that the creature doesn't die. So there's a lot of like risk inherent in that. Okay, so Fireblade Artist might be a signal. 
that Rakdos has opened. This card is definitely relatively strong. I've been pretty impressed with how this card has performed. They get me down to like six life, and I look at that they have Fireblade Artist, and I'm like, well, I'm going to start losing to their creatures. Uh, Code of Constraint is like very medium. Nothing to be too impressed by. Dead Revels, kind of a nice card. Um, pretty like good for a grindy deck. It can also be used to get back your creatures in Rakdos. Uh, and at this point, it looks like I might be playing Orzhov, though. Hmm. I think I'm going to take the Fireblade Artist. I think it's stronger than Dead Revels by a high enough margin that I'm willing to give up on the potential Dead Revels if it looks like Rakdos is where I am meant to be. Uh, Font of Agony is a very interesting card. Uh, I don't think it's really playable in Limited, and in Constructed, I think it's too slow. Uh, but it's the type of card, I, when I first read it, I thought it said Sacrifice Itself to do it, but you just remove the Blood Counters. But we already have one way to pay life. We, you're not really going to get enough ways to pay life. Rafter Demon's a card that I'm pretty disappointed in. I think it could have cost three mana and uh, spectacle cost. I mean, I think it could have spectacle costed for three mana and been like a really nice common, but instead it's just very unplayable, I think. Knight of Sorrows, a card that um, five mana, three, three looked pretty bad. It does die into a one, one. Uh, I haven't tried it out though, so I can't say for certain. Goblin Gathering, we just passed one. I don't really think this is where you want to be in the format. There's like, the goblins don't really have a ton of benefit. Um, there's also a Rakdos Guild Gate. I think we will take the Slime Bind, though. I think Slime Bind was the best card in that pack. I didn't spend a lot of time talking about it, but uh, we could still easily end up a blue-white. I think Slime Bind was just way, a little bit better than the rest of the cards in that pack. The 5-mana 3-3 three, three is just too small as a body, I think. I actually considered taking Rebel Pelt Runner, but I think that card is like comparable to Slime Bind. And in this type of deck, we could totally end up a blue-white. Uh, we could end up a blue-black. We could still end up a black-red really any combinations on the table. I think Syndicate Messenger is quite nice. 4-mana 2-3 Flyers is like decent stats, and the fact that it dies into another 1-1 one, one is quite nice as well. Uh, I wouldn't mind picking up a Dead Revels at some point. Galloping Lizarog is a card that I have not been super impressed with. I think you can run one copy as like a finisher in your Simic decks, but you usually don't need finishers in your Simic decks. You need early game uh, cards. Uh, I don't love Fairly Duelist. I think two drops that you can't really play on turn two are a little bit bad. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit more. Incubation and Congruity is another card that uh, I have not been super impressed with. Uh, the fact that you the first half doesn't find a land or a creature means that you have a relatively high fail rate with the card. Like, you could potentially just cast that in Whiff, which is really quite poor. Uh, so what you want to be doing, uh, and, like, the exiling their creature to replace it with a 3-3 is not usually a huge upgrade. Uh, back to the 2-mana, 1-2 flash that gives minus 2 minus. So uh, the effect is, like, relatively useful, like, in late, the later game, but you usually want your 2-drops to be castable on turn 2, and relevant on turn two, and that card really isn't. Combine Guild Mage, pretty um, like medium on the Guild Mage. I think it's a bit slow and clunky. I think here I'm just going to take the uh, Orzhov Guild Gate. Maybe it allow me to splash uh, in a deck. Like I could play blue, white, and splash black, something like that. Um, overall, that pack was relatively weak. Looking at this pack, Watchful Giant, definitely a medium card. Azorius Locket, pretty medium as well. <laughs> Uh, you might be wondering why I didn't just take the Combine Guild Mage. I just really don't see myself playing a Simic deck here. I did see the Galloping Lizrog and that guy, but it's just overall not a thing that I could potentially see me, myself seeing, given my first, like, si six picks. At this point, I've narrowed it down significantly. It doesn't really look like I'm playing Rakdos either. Here, I think I am just going to take the Watchful Giant. It's not the greatest card, but it's not the worst card either. Uh, you get 4-7 over two bodies, so definitely a card that you can play. And overall, we have, like, a decent mix of cards. I'm not, like, disappointed with where we are in this draft right now. Um, Blade Brand, not a super effective card, but definitely a card you can sideboard in sometimes. This 2-drop, sometimes you just need 2-drops. It works nicely with the Blade Juggler, so I think I'm leaning towards Plague, right? I don't love Storm Strike. I think plus 1, plus 0 is just not effective enough. Sinx's Insight, not really where I want to be. I think it's just too slow. So I think I'm just going to take the Plague, right, to have a 2-drop, because I don't have any 2-drops right now. Unless you like count this guy, but I'm not necessarily playing that. I think Thirsting Shade's a trap. It's just too expensive to activate it, so I'm not really looking to play that. Uh, Scuttle Gator sometimes can function as a finisher uh, for really big decks, like slow decks, but I really don't think that's a super high priority either. I could take a Sphinx's Insight here. I could take a Wall of Lost Thoughts, but I think Wall is pretty bad. I'm just going to take the Sphinx's Insight. I'm not a huge fan, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And now I'll take a Prowling Caracol. Um, not really looking like I'm going to be playing red at this point. A lot, all of my like best cards are white, so like I have three good white cards and a watchful giant. So I'm just going to take a two drop in white. 
Rampage of the Clans is not really playable, but this draft is going all right. And uh, I'll take a Rakdos Guildgate here. Maybe it'll help me splash. Having an Orzhov Guildgate if I play Black White was really actually quite nice. I, I am pretty locked into playing Black White, I think, at this point. Um, I guess I'll take the Rare. I'm not really looking to play anything else. And we got another Watchful Giant. Watchful Giant's not the worst. So let's look at our curve here. We're not going to be playing Fireblade Artist, but if we get like a uh, get the point, we could definitely take that as well. Slime Bind not looking like it's a super high option here. Ooh, Scargan Hellkite. That is a very strong rare. Probably one of the best rares in the set. It's a mythic. Um, yeah. I think we're going to take that. We have two very strong cards. We could just play red white. And then splash gold cards if we need to. That's kind of an interesting spot. But these two five drops make me kind of want to do it. My watchful giants aren't super powerful. Hmm. What else would we take out of this pack? Scargan Hellcat, I mean, you play it on turn five. You can either haste in for four damage, which you don't usually do, but you usually put the counter on it, so then you can just deal two damage every turn. What other good cards are in this pack? This card's pretty good. Carnival Carnage. Grotesque Demise. Frenzied Aranx. Not really looking to play Frenzied Aranx because I'm not really looking, seeing a ton of green, but Grotesque Demise is, would probably be what I took uh, over a Syndicate Messenger here, but we're just going to take the Scargan Hellkite. And Ethereal Absolution, another very, very, very strong rare. Um, it looks like Orzhov is kind of where we're meant to be, but we do have this very strong red card, so maybe we could... Just try and pick up a ton of dual lands and then splash a double red card. I'm not really feeling these guys all that much, but Ethereal Absolution is quite quite nice. Uh, six mana might seem like a lot for this effect, but you keep in mind that a lot of like the cards are like two ones or one ones, so you just kill all of those, buff all of your creatures, and then you can just make start making one ones and just win the game. So this is just a very strong card. After that, I think the next best card is probably Syndicate Messenger for my color combination, uh, and then after that, Arrestor Zeal, Carry On Imp. It really goes downhill a bit from there, but Ethereal Absolution, definitely the pick here. Quite a strong pickup. Hmm. So if I'm like looking to play like a three-color type deck, Scorch Mark, not really the card I want to be splashing. Uh, Chillbringer is a really nice card, but I'm not playing blue if I'm playing uh, Scargan Hellkite. I might end up playing like black, uh, white, red, and then splash powerful black cards is what I'm thinking. Maybe Consigned to the Pit is what I'm looking for. Because these cards are both very strong. I'm in an interesting spot just because of the rares I've opened. I think that's actually a really pretty interesting spot as well. Ethereal Absolution is really nice, though. Uh, I think I'm going to take a Consign to the Pit. I already have a little bit of cheap removal, some early blockers. And uh, I'll have black mana available by turn 6 almost every time. Scourge Mark is not super impressive because only dealing 2 damage is not like the greatest. Clear the stage. Another very... Nice, like, late game card. If you have big creatures. But I don't really have big creatures. I mean, I have these two guys. But if I have one of those in play, I'm probably in good shape already. Uh, so it might just be correct to take a Rakdos Guild Gate here. Or a Gateway Plaza. Leaning towards the Gateway Plaza being correct here. Senate Griffin is a card that I would like. But I think I really need to work on my mana. Because I already have a lot of strong cards. And, like, I could just play Watchful Giants. Like, I don't really want to, but it's something I could do. So I don't think I, I think I just take the gateway plaza here. Clear the stage is really nice, but I don't really have a ton of ways to trigger it anyway. Even my six drops don't have four power. Senate Griffin doesn't have four power. If I get that, get one of those. I'm just gonna take the plaza. Really work on my mana in this pack. Wow, we've seen a ton of goblin gatherings. I wonder how good that deck is. I feel like to run the Goblin Gathering deck, you need the card that gives all of your guys plus two plus zero attack. But then you could probably like go off, like two goblins, then three goblins, then four goblins. I mean, that's a lot of goblins. Bankrupt in Blood is pretty bad. Uh, Ill-gotten Inheritance is quite bad, in my opinion. Uh, people are always talking about how this card is secretly good, but uh, four mana to deal one damage every turn is just not good, and like the life gain is not always super relevant either. I the ability is very expensive as well, so I just don't don't like the card. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just going to take a Feral Maka. 
I might need a two drop. Hmm. Forbidding Spirit. Forbidding Spirit is a card that I do like. But I think final payment's a little bit better. And it, I could just be base white and then have some black cards and some white and some red cards. But it looks like I'm going to be like... I mean, because double white might just be too hard to get to work on this card. That's what I'm thinking. Um, it's definitely between these two cards. Spike Wheel Acrobat, definitely not what this deck is trying to do. Same with Spear Spewer. I'm just going to take final payment. It's easier on my mana. And now I can get an Orzhov Guildgate. Their Senate Griffin is really nice. I don't really want ever want more than one consigned to the pit. I already have two Watchful Giants, so this is a very easy gate. Helps my mana a lot. I do want to play the Skargan Hellkite in this deck, so I'll need a certain number of red sources to facilitate that. Um, but I'm trying to be like base white and then like less heavy on the black cards. Undercity Scavenger, definitely a card that I can play. Or I could just take a Rakdos Locket. Rakdos lock, it seems kind of nice, actually, now that I think about it. It's a slower deck. I have a lot of expensive cards that I can ramp into, and it fixes me for red mana. Undercity Scavenger, I don't really have a bunch of cheap creatures to sacrifice for a ton of value, so I'll take a locket. I convinced myself. Also, like, the 4-drop is, like, good in, like, a nice, like, beat-down-ish deck. Getting another guild gate is nice. Though Carnival Carnage could be really potent. I'm really hoping that I can get like the red board wipe to go with all these gates. I think I just want the the, the mana. Carnival that uh, Carnival Carnage is really nice, but I have a decent amount of removal already, and uh, I could totally get the. I think it's called Gates Ablaze or something. I actually really like this locket here because I have a very expensive top end here. Could just take the gate. I mean, there's nothing else I'm really considering here. I could take Stormstrike, but that's not really a card that I want. I'm, I'm taking the gate, like, purely because I might have enough... Like, I might pick up a gate Colossus, in which case I might play a Grill Guild gate. Though I don't think so. It's pretty unlikely, but it's more likely than Stormstrike off of the Splash. Splashing double-colored cards is very, very tricky. But I think this card is so good that it's, like, worth playing every time you open it. So I guess we'll see. don't really want to run three six-drops. I mean, four, six drops. Three is, like, still more than I'd like, but I guess we'll take Civic Stall. What four mana? Three, three. Can maybe help me punch in some damage. Not the greatest card here, but not the worst. Thirsting Shade's still bad, so still not a card I want to play. Uh, I do think Rebel Slinger's a pretty nice card, but I'm not going to splash it. I'm only splashing this card and maybe, uh, like, uh, get the point or something like that. This draft has been very interesting. I think it'll be like cool to look back and uh, review the first several picks. Because if I recall correctly, ooh, we got a gate. There's a Dead Revels, but I think mana is more important. So uh, Dead Revels is like a card that I wouldn't, like I, I still don't even think it's great because I only have eight creatures. So yeah, and I'm not going to be enabling Spectacles, so it's a four mana, bring back two creatures if two creatures have died. Keep in mind, I only have like 13 playables here, but it's going to be really easy to pick up the cards I need because... Orzhov was pretty open back one. I can just play Watchful Giant, and I don't mind playing a lot another Locket if I have to. So this is definitely a pretty sweet deck, though. Uh, the thing I think my first like several picks just taking the only card in my colors. The first several picks I went like Angel of Grace, and then I took Blade Juggler. That was probably a pretty like controversial pick. Though like I don't really like the five mana three two guy that has Afterlife. Um, I think the three mana two one's much better than I've been giving it credit for. But, ooh, I like that. But overall, I think Blade Juggler was a pretty controversial pick out of that last out of that pack. There was also a get the point in that pack and a final payment. But as I said, I got a final payment anyway, so like I wasn't like super worried about that. Get the point was potentially correct over Blade Juggler, though. I just think that Rakdos probably might like might even just want Blade Juggler over Ooh, another consign to the pit. I'll play that over the second watchful giant if I have to. I think Rakdos might just want Blade Juggler over get the point, so that's like why I took it. We're definitely counting this as a 5-drop, though. Hmm. So our mana is really good, actually. I'm glad we picked up this Gateway Plaza. Another Font of Agonies. Another Goblin Gathering. So many Goblin Gatherings. 
Jeez. Um, this pack, there's a Gateway Plaza, but I think I just might want to take Syndicate Messenger here. I already have six gates, so my mana's going to be pretty good. I don't think you want too many Gateway Plazas because they just slow you down too much, and Syndicate Messenger is quite nice. Blade Juggler would be the pick in a more like aggressive deck, but I think we just would rather have the Syndicate Messenger here. Uh, helps us slow down the game. I think it's going to be a little bit more effective than Senate Griffin. What else is there? We're not going to splash another color for Law Mage's Binding. We already are splashing very heavily for Skarg and Hellkite. I think it's so definitely between the Gateway Plaza and the Messenger here. Font of Agonies is just not good enough. You don't have ways to pay life. Doesn't even count like cards like Spear Spewer, so pretty much only Blade Juggler would trigger it. Um. So yeah, we're just going to take the Syndicate Messenger. Simic Ascendancy is quite a nice card. Um, might just mean that Simic's open. Uh, just the fact that you can put counters on your creature just gives you a really good late game. Collisions Colossus I already talked about a bit. Drill Bit is a card that I do not think is super great in draft, but it could definitely be effective uh, out of the sideboard uh, because usually you want to just be developing your board and like thought seizing them is really bit, like it doesn't do anything in the late game. And usually they don't have any card that's like so much better than their other cards that you have to take it. Bring the Trials a fine sideboard card. We're not going to splash a Smelt Ward Igneous. We could splash a Get the Point, but we do already have a ton of removal, like two of those, a Final Payment, a Summary Judgment. So four removal spells already. I'm not sure I want to splash another one. I could just take Grasping Thrill for some nice life gain. Twilight Panther, Panther for some good early defenses. I think it's definitely between Grasping Thrill and Get the Point, though. I'm going to get the point. I am going to have good mana, and I think that this card, uh, having a removal spell is going to be, another removal spell is going to be nice. And I don't really want to play the second consign the pit to the pit. Here, we're just going to take the Rakdos Trumpeter, I think. Actually, I think we're going to take Warzov Locket, hope to wheel Prowling Caracol. Rakdos Trumpeter is really like a card that you play to enable spectacle, because it's hard to block early, but it's not a particularly great blocker. Um, and I think that uh, the Warzov Locket is going to feel fulfill a really nice role, because just look at our curve. We have a ton of expensive cards here. So going from three to five is actually quite relevant. Also helps us get our double white mana. So I think we're going to take the locket here and hope to wheel Prowling Caracol. Actually, which one's more likely to wheel? I think we'd rather just take the Prowling Caracol and hope to wheel locket. That seems much more reasonable and more likely to happen because nobody really wants the locket. So yeah, I guess we'll do it that way. But we do want to end up with both those cards probably. We do want one more locket, I think, for this deck. So it looks like a ton of Simic cards. And then a Justicar's Portal. Not really where we want to be. Um, yeah, every single card in this pack is basically Simic. I guess we'll take a deface in case our opponent has some super strong artifact that we have to kill. But I don't see that being super likely. Whoa. Whoa. That could be good. Flames. How many four power or more? If we have that in play, we're already winning. Similar with that one. So we can't really turn on Flames ever, so it's not as good in our deck. But Flames is really th potent. Grasping Thrill is looking good. Plaza of Harmony might just be the pick, though. I'm actually liking Plaza of Harmony. I have six gates in this deck, so the odds of me gaining three life are not, like, un like small. And it can also, like, if I have a red land, it can give me my double red for heart Hellkite, which is really nice. Uh, Grasping Thrill is nice, but I'm going to probably be able to make playables, I'm going to guess. Um, so I just want to make sure my lands are good. Wow, late Grill Spellbreaker. I guess we take an Undercity Scavenger. Just a 4 mana 3-3 three, three a lot of the time with some upside. And we got a Grasping Thrill anyway. Nice. I think Orzov is like relatively open from this direction, but there was that one Simic pack. There's a lot of Rakdos cards, so hard to say for sure. Ooh, Skewer the Critic. That could be a really nice card to splash. We already have seven cards, seven gates. I guess this isn't a gate, technically. Don't really want... I mean, Cinder Vines is, like, not super great. I think we'll take the Skewer the Critics. Just another cheap removal effect. We already have three guild gates for Orzov, a couple for Rakdos, so I think our mana is going to be pretty effective. And this is the type of removal spell that's really nice. Gateway Plaza came back. That's nice. I think Gateway Plaza is actually playable in this deck. 
So that's nice. And this is where we see what comes back. Bring to Trial is a fine sideboard card, but we don't really need it. I think we'd rather have Drill Bit as a sideboard card. So I guess we got two Drill Bits for sideboard cards. Come on, Orzhov Locket. Come on, Orzhov Locket. I think it's in this next pack. Please. <laughs> Please, I desperately want you. Dang it, we didn't get there. Who takes an Orzov Locket? I guess it was incorrect to take the Prowling Caracol. Maybe we don't need it. I guess we'll take Justicar's Portal. Dang it, I was really expecting the Orzov Locket to come back. Weird. Definitely just going to take a 4-drop here. Huh. I think having the 2-drop is more important. Don't get me wrong. I guess we'll just take the Insight. But I was expecting the Orzov Locket to wheel because people don't generally take lockets. So let's see. Definitely not running these drill bits. I think the most likely card to run is this Watchful Giant. We didn't get a Gates Ablaze or any Gate Payoffs, which is unfortunate. I guess this is kind of a Gate Payoff, but not really. We're going to turn Exile card in return. That's not going to be super good for us. I think we want to run this Watchful Giant just so we have more creatures, so we don't just not have creatures, because we need, we need creatures for sure. And then we'll cut a consign to the pit, because we have a ton of expensive cards and a ton of removal. So sort by color. So this is our converted mana cost. Definitely on the higher end. I probably want to run 18 lands in this deck. Yeah, 18 lands seems correct here. So this is eight of them. Because like I'm adding a consigner to the pit, which is an, even, even another expensive card. These are all four drops. I really need to get to four mana on turn four. So I think it's definitely an 18 land deck. And then I can side in, consign to the pit on the draw, maybe for a land. Sort by color. So we have these two cards, which produce any color. Two Rakdos lands. This card's going to produce any color a lot of the time. And then three Orzhov lands. So we right now have five black sources. Definitely want a lot of planes, because a lot of our early things are planes. It says it wants us to have more red sources than black sources. Huh. Let's try something. So let's cut this plague white for a couple feral makas. That looks good. I like it. Ah, that's actually really nice. I mean, I'd rather have the Blade Juggler than the Scavenger. Huh. Ooh, that looks really nice. And then we can run slightly more red cards. I mean, we do have a lot of double like cards that have black mana in them, so we can't like skimp on black sources. But we have five, six, seven black sources, eight black sources just from these. So let's just run like one swamp. We actually have nine black sources. We don't even need a swamp. We have like nine black sources, and we don't have any double black cards. This is five, six, seven, eight black sources. This is actually seven black sources because this isn't a black source unless I have another gate out, but seven black sources is a lot. And then the Rakdos locket can make black. Also, we don't have any two drops that are black. So I think that we have enough black sources. Then we have one, two, three, four, five. We have one, two, three, four. And then we want seven red sources. Actually, we want like eight. So this is seven because it's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight red sources. This is five, five here. Um, ten white sources seems about right. So this is eight. This is only sixteen lands. So seventeen, eighteen. This gives us ten white sources, and four each of uh, red and white. I mean, red and black. 
Huh. With the two feral makas, I kind of want to run another consume the pit. Hmm. No, this is going to be good. What card would I cut for it? Not a watchful giant. I need the watchful giant to just block up the ground. Also, they work relatively well with civic stalwarts. Yeah, that's going to do it for the deck build. Uh, save this deck. Uh, remember that if you want to see a uh, draft recap or draft analysis, to hit that thumbs up button because if it gets to 50 thumbs up, I'll go through my first eight picks. I mean, because that's like the reasonable number because after that, things start wheeling, which depends on what I took already. But uh, definitely would be interesting to see what directions this draft could have gone. So be sure to support the channel that way. But anyway, I'm going to get into the matches and I hope you'll stay with me. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to round one. We have a pretty good hand here. We're going to keep it. We have a two drop for early defenses. We can maybe even get out this Blade Juggler relatively early. We don't have any of our best cards, but we have a consistent early game, which is what our deck struggles with. So pretty happy with where we're at here. Going to play the Feral Maka on turn two, maybe get that Blade Juggler down on turn three. And then uh, get the Gateway Plaza down as well. So playing against Simic, they tend to have a pretty good late game. I'm actually relatively happy to see the Sorrowform Hybrid. We have a ton of removal. And Sorrowform Hybrid is a card that doesn't usually want to trade with Feral Maka. So that means we might be able to get through and hit him with our Blade and get our Blade Juggler uh, spectacled, which is really going to help smooth our draw a little bit. It'll be interesting to see if he attacks here. If he attacks, I think I'll block, because it probably means he has combat. Hmm. So what could he have? He could have plus one, plus one balance. That's not the, great, the greatest. Um, he could have plus three, plus three. He could just be trading. I think trading a Feral Maka for that card is good enough. I can just play the Blade Juggler on turn 5. Or I can Spectacle it out later. I have a Gateway Plaza that I want to get into play. And if he's using his Adaptive uh, Biomancy on this, then I'm pretty fine with that. Yeah. He's spending his turn 3 not affecting the board, which is what I'm going to be doing. Uh, so... Two or more gates, so this is going to work perfectly. So next turn, I'll have an untapped three-color land. This is a nice combo. And I'll gain three life to help recover my life total. And then I can play the Syndicate Messenger, which can block the Sorrowform Hybrid really effectively. I'm not overly worried about this card because of how much removal I have. I'm actually just going to lead with the Civic Stalwart. If he has a counter spell, I'd rather this get countered. So it looks like he doesn't have a counter. And this can still trade with this pretty effectively. You can also attack through a lot of like his four drop, his potential four or five drop, like relatively high amount of those. So I can get my blade juggler down for cheaper. My mana is so good in this deck. Feels good. We've got okay, perfect. Let's just play our 
spectacular. And pass the turn. Ooh, that's interesting. So we can consign to the pit that and then hit him for, for six. And then hope to just draw another removal spell to deal with the sour form hybrid. He's giving it haste. That's bold. That is very interesting. Okay, that sol solves that problem. Definitely gonna use the consi consign to the pit first. And I wanna use the removal spell while he's tapped out so he can't have a counter spell. I'm in good shape in this race, especially with that get to the point top deck. He was holding up four mana for a couple of turns. So it feels like he has a counter spell, but that he didn't see a target worth countering, which is weird because usually you want to deploy your threats first. He also just might have a very expensive hand. So that could be another potential reason for why he would deploy his cards in this manner. Mammoth Spider, sure. Well, that's a good draw. I think for now we're just going to play our Watchful Giant. Actually, Watchful Giant doesn't really do, really do anything on this board. So we can just... Because this does have Flash. I feel like he has a counter spell, so I, don't, I just a lot of decisions. So I could just cast Watchful Giant, but that doesn't really do anything. It does like stabilize me and make the ground really stalled. But I think that favors him. And this is definitely not one of my most powerful cards. Like this card would definitely be better at this if it costs six. So like I don't really care about the mana efficiency right now. I'm never going to be able to double spell here. I'm just going to cast it on my main phase. Play around a counter spell. Simic often doesn't have um, great tools to deal with, um, like to kill creatures. He could like use a fight spell, but in that case, these creatures just trade. That was definitely an interesting turn, though. I think at this point I'm pretty favored. My hand is strong. I have three cards, but they're all pretty expensive spells. I have good top decks. Definitely going to bring the con extra consigned to the pit in in this matchup because it's not a super speedy matchup. So I can afford to play another expensive card over maybe a Feral Maka. But here my opponent's in a bit of a pickle. It might just be that they have only expensive cards in their hand. Mammoth Spider doesn't block Angel of Grace, so that's really good for me. And once the Mammoth Spider dies, my Syndicate Messenger can start getting in as well. I forget what I took Plaza of Harmony over. It's a pretty good card, but I think Plaza of Harmony just really helps my mana consistency. I really wish I had a gate payoff, though. That would have been really nice. Maybe the gate Colossus card. Um, but the one I really wanted was the board clear, obviously. Because that would be really good in this type of deck. Opponents deep in the tank makes me... They probably have, like, multiple 4-drop or 5-drop creatures to play. Um, they didn't play anything on turn 4. They are, don't haven't been making land drops to, like, adapt to this guy and things like that. So I think they have, like, a 5-drop in their hand, and they're deciding how they want which one they want to play. Or whether they want to like just hold things up. 
So they're holding up two mana. Okay, so incongruity. It's exiled, so I can't use its effect, but I don't really need the effect anyway. That's a really good draw. Hmm. So I can do this, and then end of their turn, I can final payment their Mammoth Spider. And then on my turn, get the point. It looks like they're holding up like a combat trick or something. I really don't want to get quenched at this stage of the game, but I feel like they would have... I mean, they never really had an opportunity to use quench because I had two extra mana when I played this, and they might have just decided that they didn't want to counter a Civic Stalwart. So I think my play here is going to be Syndicate Messenger. They can't quench that, and then on their end step I can final payment something, probably the Mammoth Spider. So this is the six mana that they needed for a while. I wonder what their payoff is going to be. And also we can tell from the way they tapped their mana for the Incubation Incongruity that they do not have a double blue counter spell. Um, because they just played a... They, they could have held up double blue for their Essence Capture or whatever that card is. Shark Doe Crab, okay. So, I think I'm just going to go for the final payment. Then I'm going to kill their mammoth spider. They can quench this, but then they don't have quench for other things. And if they don't have quench, then this is just way better. So now I can go black, red, three, four, five. Kill shark doe crab. No, that's probably not necessary here. Gonna hit him for two. Maybe he has a fairy duelist. Play Watchful Giant. He doesn't have quench, he's just holding up like a gift of strength or something, potentially. But now I'm wide enough that I can just kill one of his creatures and then finish him off. That's what it feels like. I think in that one scenario with the final payment, like his quench, the way my hand has worked, his quench is going to get me no matter what I do because I want to be casting my spells. So if he doesn't have quench, if he does have quench, it's going to be trade for something. So I might as well just cast it. Also, it opens me up to draw one of my powerful top decks. Okay. That's doable. So I think I can kill that and just swing for lethal. There's no one blue card that could stop me. So he blocks three, he blocks three, six, and I hit him for three, five, so he's dead. No need to show him my bomb rare. Because then he might save his, like, removal for it. He blocks here, here, and he blocks here, and he takes three, five. 
Eight nine. So you said. Okay, onto the sideboard of games. Definitely bringing in the consigned to the pit. He has a lot of big creatures that I want to kill. Um, drill bit is a consideration. Plague right, not so much. So we're going to bring in consigned to the pit for feral maka. It is potentially correct to just play the consigned to the pit over feral maka anyway. Three two drops is like the minimum for a defensive deck. The reason I'm having the other one is because I don't have any three drops, so I kind of need it in the main deck, but I think that this will be a fine sideboard adjustment. I don't really want to bring in Drill Bit. Just another slow card. Maybe I'd rather have it than a Rester's Zeal. Yeah, that could be correct. Get rid of some of his late game. Yeah, a Rester's Zeal is a fine card. Actually, maybe I just want to keep the Feral Maka and I take out the Arrester's Zeal. Yeah, this seems better. I think I want to keep my four two drops, considering that I don't have any three drops. Okay, this is a fine hand. Definitely slow, but we have all of our colors. And our deck is very slow in general, so. His deck is also not super fast. So there's a two drop. <laughs> Gateway Plaza is our two drop of choice. A lot of the time anyway, so. Him not having a two drop is great for us. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna get this down while we can. A lot of the time, against a non-blue deck, I would probably just play Pharaoh Maka there, but I don't wanna just let him Counter. I guess he could counter it if he wanted to, but I want to get this down in case we need the mana later, because we don't have like a great other turn to play it. Feral Maka, we can play next turn. I guess we could have done this the next turn, but if I draw like Racto Signor, I want to be able to play it this turn. And it all works out. I wasn't going to be attacking into that anyway. I would want to hold it back on defense. So it's all the same, but it's like an interesting thought pattern. Definitely glad I'm running 18 lands in this deck, because I have so many expensive cards. That is a weird trade to make. Um, generally, you don't want to trade your bigger creatures for their smaller creatures, uh, unless you have a good reason to do so. And that, okay, he has a second one. That's still not a great reason. So, and now my Syndicate Messenger can trade with that and leave me with a 1-1. One -one. So, my mana is perfect once again. I can play my Angel of Grace on curve. He is stuck on lands, which makes this even better. I'm definitely going to trade here. I'm left with a 1-1. One, one. He's not. Oh, we see it in action at last. Wilderness Reclamation. Oh, we shall see what we shall see. Not a fan of that card, but we'll see how it performs here. This is like the worst possible scenario for it, too, because he's just a little bit stuck on lands. He's not developing the fastest, so... We're just going to flash in the Angel of Grace on his turn. 
because he's going to tap his mana almost assuredly, and so that'll just ensure it resolves. And next turn, if we draw a land, we can go lock it plus four drop. Or just play consigned to the pit. Is he going to give it haste? Hopefully. Doesn't really attack past our watchful giant anyway. Land? Feral Maka. That's fine. We're just going to play our Rakdos Locket and play Feral Maka. Okay, that seems very mediocre. Be the hero you were always meant to be, Feral Maka. Maka with two A's. Lost are the lush meadows and verdant forests where Maka prowled and Lamasu soared. Lost are the wilds where our hearts were free. Okay. That would be kind of annoying if I didn't have a kill spell. He has a counter. Yeah, a little annoying. But he would have had counter up anyway. Now he can't adapt. So I could hit him for a 6 8. That seems a little bit greedy though. I'd rather jump with my Maka than my 1 1 flyer though. And now he no longer gains benefit from Wilderness Reclamation because he has nothing to spend his mana on anyway. Okay. Oh my gosh, if he had made that attack, I would have been very stunned. Okay. Hmm. I'm just going to play this and then final payment is uh, Trollbred Guardian, but after blocking. At this point, I'm not sure I want to attack with Angel of Grace anymore. I think I'll block here. So at the end of turn, he's going to adapt the Sarform hybrid. So I want to be able to double block that effectively. And then I'll just chump kill that. So I'll go block, block. He doesn't use anything. Why would you? That's bizarre. I'm not going to pay five life for this.
If I had a wilderness reclamation, I could sacrifice the wilderness reclamation. That's a combo. Wilderness reclamation becomes a gain five. Interesting. So I think I'm going to end up in good shape here. The way I see this going is he gives it haste attacks with these three guys, probably. Yeah. He doesn't attack with this. Final payment gives me a nice chump plus kill something option. And then I can use this to restore myself to 10 life. This card blocks all of his guys. Perfect. He gave it haste, but now he's rethinking it. He has to commit to an all-out attack if he gives this haste. He should have thought about this more. Because if he just attacks like that, I just go block, double block there. I trade my 2-3, but I get a 1-1 one, one back. And I only lose one life, and he loses his guy. Um, and I'm also going to be able to kill his thing. This is definitely not the attack you want to make. The thing my opponent needed to do was put four counters on this on my end step. Okay. That's an easy block. Killed my Feral Maka. That's kind of bizarre. Maybe I will pay five life. I think I should just sack the spirit though. I think I need to kill the troll bread guardian. The spirit is definitely not is definitely worth me losing five life. Because that guy's going to be a 7-7, seven, seven, and also he gives all his other dudes trample. And now I can just block, I can like, just double block that. I can actually start hitting him. I can just triple block this and take five. Or I could just double jump. And I can even threaten lethal next turn if he just plays a land here and like doesn't actually have a way to use his mana. I don't know why he's not adapting this. He can adapt at instant speed. Shark to crab. Yeah, that's definitely annoying.
So if he didn't draw a spell there, I could have just killed him. Because I play my Civic Stalwart, attack with everything, he blocks here. Oh, never mind, I can't kill him. He would go to one. Waiting for me to respond, okay. He's letting me attack him. I hit him for five. He adapts, taps this down. I'm just going to play this. Okay. Could have been correct to just hit him for two and then play this and this. I didn't really consider that. I like having Syndicate Messenger on defense, and uh, I like kind of saving the Stalwart for potentially like swinging attack. I don't know why he's not adapting. This guy, at least. Okay, he gains two life. I will say this, if you do have Wilderness Reclamation in your deck, which you shouldn't, by the way, I don't think, um, this is not how you use it properly. Sorry for the constantly open thing. I want to make sure the light doesn't get too bad. One second, I'm just going to turn the light switch on. That's much better, much better. There's so many cards that I could just draw that would just end the game. Like my dragon, my card that gives all my guys plus one, plus one, and all of his guys minus one, minus one would be unreal. Oh, he's using the shark to crab. Probably tapping down the giant, I presume. Or the angel. Yep. You still can't attack past my 3-6. Heck yeah, Watchful Giant. You know, loitering is not only illegal, but unwise, since those who stay too long in one place are apt to be stepped on. Wise words from the giant soldier. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I can afford to play this. Yep, I'm going to... Wow, he's just not adapting. For apparently no reason. Maybe he forgot that this has adapt for. Within each of us, within each of us, the potential for great power waits to be released. It is a human lizard warrior. This was said by Zija, or Ziha, the Simic mutationist. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to become half lizard, not gonna lie. I saw that Spider-Man movie. And uh, that was not ideal. The reason I didn't cast get the point right there is because if he passes and doesn't do anything, I kind of just want to sacrifice my Rakdos locket. <sighs> okay, he's adapting. Also, this could happen where he, like, adapt this guy. 
It might have been better to play around counter magic, but I think that the benefits of sacrificing Rakdos Locket to find more gas is pretty nice. Um, and also, he didn't really have good attacks anyway. I mean, he does if he adapts this, but if he adapts this, he doesn't have mana, so. Because remember, he didn't have this land, so he wouldn't have been able to play Quench or anything like that. That was all, like, subconscious, I'm pretty sure. Like, I wasn't, like, thinking, oh, he can't play Quench, but my mind was probably there. Subconsciously. The power of the subconscious mind. This is, like, a slow opponent. Like, he probably couldn't kill me in a game three if he wanted to. Bottom. So I can just take five. I can just take eight and kill him on the crack back. Five, eight, I go to one. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. No reason to risk it. I'll just put block here too. Five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, civic star wards with a win. Boom, my opponent conceded anyway. Anyway, uh, hopefully that demonstrates some of the power of this deck. I'll be making the feral maka change, putting that in the main deck. Um maybe I already did, but yeah, I'm gonna I think yeah. But anyway, that's gonna do it for round one, and I hope you'll stay with me for round two. Hello everybody and welcome to round two. We have a keeper here, double gateway plaza, so we have all of our colors. We got a summary judgment for early. Probably our turn three play, we're gonna go mountain, gateway plaza. Ooh, plaza of harmony can help us stabilize with that sweet, sweet life gain. Uh, important to note, we did make one change to the deck. We cut the combat trick for a uh, another consigned of the pit. Hopefully we can draw some of our late game power, but I'd be content with a a maka, a feral maka, I think it's called. Okie doke. We're not super worried about taking a little bit of damage, so we're just going to deploy our gateway plaza here. I mean, we can't do anything else really anyway. I'm not going to play plaza for no value and uh, can't cast summary judgment, so... Pretty easy play overall, but definitely okay with where I'm at right now. And now I can start getting into my five drops, my six drop. I'm not super worried about where I'm at right now. I want to save summary judgment, I think, for something that's more of a threat to me. Yeah, that's a little bit annoying, but... We'll save the two life. Maybe the information's relevant. We'll just play our guy and pass. This way we, he can't attack with Sage Rose, and also we can just block his Syndicate Messenger with ours. Ooh, he's splashing black. Interesting. Sure thing.
I think we're just going to play Civic Stall Ward here. We can kill this kind of at our leisure. We're going to gain two life from this. It's kind of nice to not let our opponent know about the life gain until we like need to play the land. So he's holding up a lot of mana right now, which makes me kind of want to do 7 instant speed. That being said, Watchful Giant is attempting play. Jeez. Hmm. I think I'm just going to use Summary Judgment. Actually, I'm going to use Get the Point. That way, if he has an instant... So he doesn't have an instant. He may have a counter spell, but... So, let's see if this works. Okay, he had a counter. Okay, let's attack him. I should have tried to cast my spell first. That was sloppy. Because now if he has quench or something of that nature, I get countered and wrecked. We're in decent shape, though. Okay. So he uh, sacrificed his guy, which was nice for us. And uh, we can summary judgment this thing. Blade juggler is good. So it just instant resolves, probably means it doesn't have a counter. But we need to draw one of our payoff spells. Our best spell would be the one that gives all our stuff plus one plus one and all his stuff minus one minus one. That would be incredible. Because then we could start making creatures and we would just win. Oh my god, he has it too. <laughs> That's real bad for us. Overall, just a bit of a clunky draw for our deck. Rats. Yeah, we did. It doesn't really matter, but like we drew 11 lands, so. In 16 draws, so not really much we could have done there. I like the way our deck is configured against his. Maybe this would be good against his uh, aura. I think we'll bring in Drill Bit for a Feral Maka. Actually, yeah, for a Feral Maka. Maybe second Drill Bit for a Watchful Giant. Just having a Twizzler. Yeah, I don't even know if I want to play first. I guess. Hmm. 
Mulliganing feels bad. We'll put that on top. Little does our opponent know that we also have bomb rares in our deck. We've got those two mythics, and we've got our own copy of Ethereal, whatever the heck it's called. Ab Ethereal Absolution, maybe. No blue man is a good... I spoke too soon. We don't even draw in gates so that our palace of Har plaza of harmony can uh, make red mana. We're drawing the literal worst lands in our deck. <sighs> That's a draw. That can kill him very quickly. Okay, so we'll flash in our Angel of Grace. And then kill his guy. Put that on the top. Hit him for seven. And we just want spells to finish the game off. We have another removal spell that also does two to him. Obviously, we have better spells, but a four drop is like not a card you scry to the bottom here. Oh, that's unfortunate. Go, Feral Maka. Be the hero you always meant to be. Okay. So now we can have lethal pretty much guaranteed. Attack, he'll trade this off. We drill bit him to make sure he can't do anything, and then we just consign to the pit one of the tokens. That actually would have been a problem. Because uh, he could have sacrificed it in response. So, drill bit for the win. Boom. So the sideboard plan worked. So we're presumably going to be on the draw this game. Not liking the look of Prowling Caracol. Eh, it's probably better than Maka. Hmm. Yep, let's run it back. Drill bit looked really good there, obviously.
This is a good hand. All our colors, we have our bomb. An early prowling caracal, some ramp. We have an 18 land deck, so we're pretty likely to draw a bunch of lands. And our opponent may be stumbling on lands. Given the fact that they have two planes and nothing else. Oh man, I forgot we have Star Skarg and Hellkite in this hand too. So overall, pretty fearsome stuff. Feel pretty favored. We just need to draw some lands. Which is a good place to be when your deck has 18. I think 18 lands is definitely the correct choice with this. Oh my gosh, and he's Law Mages binding my Prowling Caracal. That's a really good sign for me. Fortunately, we also miss on land, but... Oh, he gets a scry too. Where is he going to scry him? Put both on the bottom. Jeez, he's really needing those lands, and he didn't see any land. Jeez. So bring to trial is kind of scary. He's never going to get to this. Hmm. I just want to get rid of Senate Griffin. Ethereal Absolution is probably just the take, though. He's so far away from that, though. He needs to drip three lands in a row. I'm going to win before that happens. Bring to trial can deal with my Scargan. Let me get rid of the bring to trial. So he hit a land. He's going to go for his Senate Griffin. He also needs to have a specifically a black source to cast Ethereal Absolution, which isn't super likely. Land. I really, really need to draw my own lands here. This is so awkward. Okay, there's a windstorm, Drake. Come on, deck. We can top that and then cast our Skargan Hellkite next turn. If he rips a swamp here, I swear to God. Oh, yay. So he can't cast Ethereal Absolution. Hype. Red. Red. Um... I think I'm going to go with the counter. Actually, I'm going to go with haste. He's only got one card in hand. He can't cast it even. Next turn, I can cast my own Ethereal Absolution.
Boom. Yes, we got there. Oh, the victory so sweet. We had we played both of our bombs, our double red card. Man, our deck is sweet. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed round two, and I hope you'll stay with me for round three. Hello, and welcome to the final round. We won the die roll we would like to play first, just because our deck is slow, and we want to maximize our chances of not falling behind. We're going to keep this hand. Has all our colors, even has double red. Can cast Feral Maka on turn two. Definitely leading with the Orzov Guild Gate. Tinker Taylor, that's a pretty nice ref. I'm pretty sure that's the name of a um, song from Name of the Wind. We're definitely fine trading off. As it is, we'll definitely just summary dismissal this, I think. Oh, that did not go well. Hmm. Well, we traded one for one, but we took a lot of damage in the process. Better to have more creatures in play before we play Civic Stalwart. Also, the 2 3 blocks this very well. Because even if he finds another way to kill, we're going to be in good shape. And if we draw a land, this card can get through so we can play Skewer the Critics for one. This is a very beat down draw from our deck. I'm liking it. Oh, if we could potentially just kill him. Civic Stalwart, pump our team, attack him with everything, then skewer the critics' his face. So he can block this four. Definitely playing it. So he would go to one life. Just gonna play around counter magic. He might play differently, but if we draw a land, we want to cast our Watchful Giant to threaten lethal. We also have three creatures. He has one. He also needs to be playing a Flyer this turn or he dies. Yeah, I'm not jumping, bud. Okay. He still needs something else. And of course he has it. Okay, so that could have been worse. I obviously would have preferred to draw land so I could just cast Watchful Giant there. But my spirit is still lethal. I'm not getting through on the ground, so I might as well not lose to a combat trick. You could have the white one. Probably less likely to have a green one that matters.
Boom! Got there. That was a sweet game for sure. I did not think our deck had the capability to win like that. Ooh, baby, that was close. Um, do I want drill bits in this matchup? I think the caracals are going to be fine. Keeping this hand, but it's sketchy. Okay. Oh, it's a chance he'll whiff. That'd be awesome. Okay, wind storm Drake. I'll end up trading that off board probably. I played that wrong. I should have played my Rakdos Guildgate so I could play my Feral Maka if I drew it. Huge misplay. I have two Feral Makas in my deck. Never punished. The steeple creep. I should have just saved it, but I don't really matter. Play the throw. I can start attacking into his stuff. Play Sylvan Messenger so I can block that. If I block here, he almost definitely has Gift of Strength. Otherwise, you can play Windstorm Drake. How am I going get, to get Gift of Strength out of his hand anyway? I'll block here, because this way if he wants to use Gift of Strength, it, I at least do the trade. So that worked out relatively fine. Because I'm fine making that trade, because I do need to kill the 4 too. Play my Caracal. Play my Syndicate Messenger. Next turn, I can Civic Stalwart get in for a big hit. Oh, that card's bad. Like here, I can't punish it completely, but it's bad. So we can play Watchful Giant, then Civic Stalwart. Keep in mind that he probably has Gift of Strength. Because we saw that game one, so that's the combat trick that I'm assuming he has. If he wants to use Gift of Strength to let my guy get Afterlife, I'm fine with that. Stony Strength, okay. A little bit more annoying, but we'll make do. Hopefully this resolves. Yay! So our Civic Stalwart and uh, Maka can hold the ground. We'll take three here. 
and we'll get a big attack in. That's really bad. Not where you want to be. Frilled Mystic gets me again. I just need a way to kill Windstorm Drake and I win this game. I have a lot of those, so it's actually probably best that he countered, used his counter spell on my relatively unimportant card. Next turn I'm going to jump just so he can't like top removal spell. Ooh. That is truly a fearsome top deck. That is nice. So he had stony strength earlier. Please resolve. I beg of you. Yes, that's what I like to see. Ooh, baby. What are you doing in here, Windstorm Drake? I thought you were doing other things like dying horribly. Sure. So I can go back up to 10 life at some point. I feel very favored in this top deck war just because my deck has so many expensive cards. And he has cards like Cerulee Caretaker, clearly. Come on, big draw deck. Big draw. I'll have this up. It's actually a really good draw. I can quad block this if I need to. Which I probably will have to. Big draw there. I still can't attack because of this reach guy, but things are becoming more and more stable, and I do have that dragon in my deck. I do have the card that gives all of his guys minus one, minus one, and all my guys plus one, plus one. So I'm like one out of nine to draw those every draw step, which is like a little bit above 10%. And he, his, his deck just doesn't have the late game of my deck. I have a ton of, I have another consign. There was some consideration to not blocking with the cat at all. Just because then he could only kill like these two guys.
but I want to play around plus three, plus three. This barely does it. That was really good. So I'll probably kill this end of turn, just make sure he doesn't play anything scarier that I have to kill right now. I'm glad I waited. Because this can become an 8-8. Eight eight. Definitely don't want a Feral Maka. That was good that I saved the removal spell, though. An 8-8 would have been problematic. Is 3-4 holding down the fort. He's probably just holding lands in hand. He would have countered get the point if he had a counter spell. Ooh. Ooh. Oh man. This will force some blocks. I'm not actually worried because I have this thing to get, put me up to 10 life if he tries to go for anything. Trading 3 2 for 3 2. That's fine by me. Chumping. I guess that's the power of having some hidden information. Why would you block that guy instead of the Caracol, though? Oh, he wants to block that as well. What? He's keeping that guy alive? Maybe he like has one out that requires that specific mana cost. But he can't even use it for mana. Boom! We got the 3-0. and oh. oh my gosh. This deck was sweet. Oh my goodness. Like, it worked really well together. We had that random beatdown draw game one against that guy. Civic Stalwart did really well, especially alongside Watchful Giant. That was a sweet combo. I mean, we won a lot of our games without drawing our rares. Like, that last game... We didn't draw our Skargan Hellkite. I guess we did draw our Angel of Grace, but we won that beatdown game without our rares. And no, we never mind. We drew had the Skargan Hellkite, but we had a lot of rares. But we also had a lot of like cool synergies at common. And uh, Feral Maka performed, Prowling Caracol performed. So I guess Cat Tribal was the secret name of the deck. Red White Cat Tribal, <laughs> Elephant Soldiers. I mean, this was basically a zoo deck because we have cats, we have elephants. We have birds, we have angels and dragons, and wow, this deck was sweet. Lots of rares, lots of power, and we managed to get the first trophy of the format. So, uh, for me at least. Anyway, that is going to do it for this draft. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit that thumbs up. Uh, doing a draft analysis of this will be pretty interesting, and I will be sure to do that if this video gets to 50 thumbs up. Also, leave your comments section whether you want to see MTG Arena or Mag more Magic the Gathering online drafts. And uh, let me know if you made it to the end by saying hashtag... Uh, made it all the way to the end. Actually, let's do something more uh, unique, like hashtag Feral Maka for the win uh, in the comments section down below. 
But uh, anyway, that is going to do it for this draft video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you next time.